Thanks for joining us here on 9 News Plus. I'm 9 News Meteorologist Chris Bianchi. All right, so this is a question I get a lot. This is a term you're going to hear a whole lot of over the next couple of months, the monsoon. So what is the monsoon? How does it impact your weather? And also, how will it impact your weather this week? Well, the last part of that, some pretty big impacts because of the monsoon this week, starting a little bit tomorrow, but especially for your Thursday and your Friday. But once again, when we talk about the monsoon, and this is the first and biggest takeaway from it, the monsoon itself is not a rainstorm. What the monsoon is, all it is, it's a reversal in the wind direction. So winds normally here in Colorado and throughout the United States, they normally will come out of the west. This time of year, they tend to come out of the south, and I'll show you exactly why. That is the monsoon. Again, the monsoon itself, not a rainstorm, is just a reversal of the wind. So that said, the definition of a monsoon, it's a seasonal wind pattern that we see during the mid to late summer and early part of fall. It can be wet or it can be dry, but usually we associate the monsoon with a lot of wet weather with rain, and that's a pretty good thought, and that's because the origin of the wind direction tends to come from oceans or bodies of water. That often means a lot of rain for us. Now, it goes from mid-June to early September. We're getting off to a late start to it this year, and I'll explain why that's the case in just a second. It can occur in many locations across the world. The most famous monsoon outside of um, outside of the North American monsoon, which is the one that impacts us here in, in Colorado. Uh, the other one that's really, really famous, you've probably heard about the one in India uh, that provides a ton of rain out in South Asia uh, this time of year, but you get monsoons basically in every continent, um, and it is caused by a difference in the way that land and seas are heated. So think about it this way. A landmass heats very differently from water. So if you go to, for example, Florida, or you go to a beach in Texas or California, come mid to late afternoon, you get that kind of nice cool breeze that comes off of the water. That is also caused by the difference in the way that land and water heats. Of course, if, think about boiling a pot of water, right? That takes a few minutes to do. Uh, but if you were just, for example, if you put 350 degree temperatures on, I don't know, a stove top or something like that, it would heat instantly, right? Um, you get that instant, you know, uh, you wouldn't want to touch the pot as it's boiling, right? Because it, of course, that sort of uh, material will heat it much quicker. And that difference in the way that those two different things are heated is what causes the monsoon in part. All right, I know I've said a lot of mumbo jumbo here for a quick second. Here's basically how it works. So, first and foremost, we got the jet stream this time of year. This is generally speaking, generally speaking. In fact, this is basically how the jet stream is working this week. But generally speaking, this time of year, mid to late summer, you tend to see this sort of jet stream pattern. Jet stream, a little bit of a reminder, narrow stream of really, really strong winds at about 30,000 feet that dictates a lot of our weather. So way up there where planes fly, cru cruising altitude, um, that's where you see the jet stream winds, and again, that is a huge player. Where exactly jet stream is, is a, basically for me, when I'm doing my forecasting, basically the first thing I'll look at is where's the jet stream, how strong is it, right? So this is where the jet stream is this time of year, and it moves from west to east. Now, because you got the jet stream way up north, you got a ridge, a high pressure that develops, and winds around an area high pressure move in a clockwise fashion. That means you're drawing moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico this way, right? So that's one way you're getting moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico, but then you throw in a, a monsoon low. This is very common this time of year. You often get low pressure over the deserts of Northwest Mexico and Southern Arizona. And that is thanks to just, again, the way that the land and the sea heats. You get an area of low pressure that develops over Northwest Mexico. You get a ridge of high pressure that develops over the Southern United States because it's a lot more humid in that part of the country. Meantime, of course, Arizona, Northwest Mexico, the desert, so you get an area of low pressure. And long story short, you got basically two different funnels of moisture, one from the Pacific, another from the Gulf of Mexico. And that leads to a lot of very, very moist wind for us this time of year, and especially for us into the desert Southwest, but we feel it a lot here in Colorado. I will say that Western Colorado often tends to feel a lot more of the monsoon than Eastern Colorado, but trust me, here in Denver, we definitely get monsoon storms, and we actually have the chance for some of those later on this week, but 
long story short, we've generally just got a very, very moist flow this time of year. So here's another way to look at it. So there's that ridge of high pressure, humid air over the Gulf of Mexico, hot air over the eastern third of the US, slow moving upper level winds. That means again, generally speaking, we're talking about a moist flow, that humid air that leads to a lot of that stormy weather for us across the four corner states and even into Southern Nevada and Southern California. Now, here's another factor at play. You've probably heard of the fact that we're moving into an El Nino. We're just in the middle of that transition. By the way, that transition is probably a lot of what's behind what's been such a wet and cool spring and summer for us here across Colorado. Um, that Again, that transition from a very, very pretty robust and multi-year La Nina to an El Nino. And as a reminder, in El Nino, that means that we're talking about warmer than average sea surface temperatures across the central and eastern Pacific Ocean. And what that leads to, because the Pacific is just such a huge ocean, it's by far the biggest ocean in the world, what happens to the Pacific, because again, it's such a huge body of water, it has a huge domino effect of weather across the rest, rest of the world. And that, for many of us, in terms of seasonal forecasting and trying to figure out what might happen, generally speaking, over, say, three, four months from now, first thing we'll look to is usually El Nino or La Nina because again, the Pacific is so big, it is the biggest driver of weather across the world. And that fact, and the fact that right now the, the Central and Eastern Pacific is now transitioning to a warmer than average pattern that tells us that one thing's gonna happen is that the, El, uh, that the monsoon is probably gonna get cut off a little bit. So I mentioned here how the monsoon has gotten off to a very, very slow start. And that is probably because we're transitioning from La Nina to El Nino. And El Nino tends to suppress, tends to lead to a later start to the monsoon. The last few years, we've had a very active monsoon. We've been in the middle of a La Nina. El Nino, generally speaking, tends to mean a later and slower monsoon season for us. And that's because the jet stream winds tend to get pulled a little further south. And it means we just don't get the quite, uh, we don't quite get the intensity of those southerly moist winds that we often will get in a different time of year. So with all that said, we often will see a wet winter for the southern United States, but the monsoon, monsoon season tends to be a bit delayed. But the first signs of the monsoon waking on up, returning for us, starting a little bit actually today. Some of those uh, gusty showers you might get this afternoon here on this Tuesday, July the 18th, are gonna be the result of the monsoon. But those showers and storms will become more widespread for tomorrow and Thursday. And this is monsoon moisture. We've got an area high pressure off to our south that's drying up that moisture out of the Gulf and out of the Pacific, and especially the Pacific. Um, and that's gonna keep us fairly, fairly uh, stormy as we head over the next few days. And it looks like at this point, tomorrow, especially Thursday, looking to be pretty stormy days for us. And this thanks to the monsoon that we're seeing the large majority of that action. By the way, those are monsoon storms for Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. So you go to happy hour on Friday, on Saturday, or over the next couple of days, and you look up and you see those clouds. You can tell your friend, your pal next to you and say, hey, that nerd on the TV told me that that is because of the monsoon. And you'd be right. The monsoon is that annual reversal of those winds that leads to those showers and thunderstorms that we'll probably get over the next couple of days here across Colorado and the monsoon. I haven't mentioned this as well. It is a vital, vital moisture source for the Southwest. In places like Phoenix and Las Vegas, they get half, if not more than half of their typical annual precipitation because of the monsoon. That seasonal wind direction shift, that means that we're drawing up moisture out of the Gulf of Mexico and especially the Pacific. And that means we're getting, again, some beneficial moisture that we all need. And again, last few years, very, very active monsoon season. Right now, middle and part of July, we're just starting to see the first signs of the monsoon waking on up for us here across Colorado. And that is some good news. That means we're starting to get into that monsoon season, which means basically daily shower and storm chances, thanks to that, again, general wind pattern that we're drawing up that moisture out of the south and out of the west. So hopefully that gives you a good idea about what the monsoon is, how it works, and also why it's been such a slow start to the monsoon season for us here in Colorado here in 2023, and also what could lie ahead for us over the course of the next few days.